be on the reef, it, it's, it's mystical, I suppose, is the words I'd use for it, because you know it's there, but you can't see it a lot of times. The Great Barrier Reef is who, who Australians identify with, that, that's who we are. But it's always interesting, and there's always plenty of life around the place, and life that has to be preserved. The reefs off Japan and places are totally decimated, and unless we look after this, we're we going to lose it. We're in the Fitzroy Delta, which is at the mouth of the Fitzroy River, and this shoreline behind me here is the shore of Balaclava Island and it's the site of one of the proposed coal port developments for this area. That's a terminal that's supposed to be shipping out 35 million tonnes per annum and in order to get the big ships into this terminal they would have to dredge a big channel to bring that depth down deep enough for the Panamax sized ships to come in. They're the largest ships that are able to transit the Panama Canal. 320 metres long and they require about 18 metres when they're fully loaded of a depth of water. And the channel currently that exists into this bay is about seven to eight metres deep. So there's a massive amount of material, about 12 million cubic metres of material that would need to be dredged out of this channel in order to allow those ships to come to this shoreline. It's going to end up on the barrier reef because if you look at um, simple engineering, uh, you've got say an engine running and it's drawing in air and burning, uh, burning fuel and any pollutants that are coming through that air are going to catch in the filter. And where's our biggest filter around here? It runs all the way up this coast. And it's going to filter all the crap from there and it's all going to end up on that reef. There's nowhere else for it to go. I'm extremely concerned if the Great Barrier Reef World Heritage Area becomes, it gets put in danger. We have evidence, we've seen the effects of the port development, the way it's been handled down in Gladstone, and we see that for our future. When I first came here, Gladstone was a good spot. I left Gladstone two years ago because it was, a, as far as cruising is concerned, it's, it's lost, it's gone world best practice. It's, it's words that roll off their tongues but but has no meaning. So yes, if we're an industrial city, um, make it so that we, we are a, a guiding light to the rest of the world. But they haven't done that. I don't think that the long-term effects of what's happening in our area are really being looked hard at. I've got nothing against development. I work in that area myself. Um, but. I'd, just, I'd like to see a lot better controls. And, and probably the worst part of it is, as soon as somebody else comes up with some coal somewhere else or some market somewhere else like they have recently, everything stops. Uh, we're left carrying the can and we'll be the ones left with the mess. It might create jobs, but it'll also lose jobs as well. I can't see anybody coming out of this well. It's just, uh, it's just not gonna happen. Disappointing to say, World Heritage doesn't really protect our area here. It didn't protect further south in Gladstone on, on Curtis Island, and it would appear that it's not necessarily a safe bet to protect this area either. We have to really stand up and be counted and say that we don't want this to be developed. Everything here is so lovely and crisp and clean, um, but I don't know how long for. That's, the, that's what I'm frightened of. This could destroy my business and the tourist industry. Our area has a filter for everything that's being washed out of this river and as I say, it's going to end up being filtered through the Great Barrier Reef. It's really, really simple. Don't mess with it when it's so critical to the economy of Australia. It's so critical to Australia's reputation. This is a park. This is a marine park, it's not a port.